Greetings, I'm Ben, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to test uh, regression paths in structural equation modeling for statistical significance using a chi-square difference test. So, um, we will be testing this model. Uh, the dependent variable is the only latent variable in this model. It is an affective polarization that's measured with a parcel of a variety of different items. Um, the mediator in this model is perceived commonality, which is measured with a single um, visual measure called the inclusion of the other in the self scale. And the um, independent variable is an experimental treatment where people were asked to read an article about a Democrat and a Republican getting along with each other. Um, so it's a dummy variable where people who have a one read the article about uh, Democrats and Republicans interacting and getting along and having a good time together, and people who have a zero read a uh, control article. So uh, to fit this model, we're going to use Levon, uh, which is the wonderful uh, SEM package developed by Yves Roussel for R. And if you're not familiar with that, I recommend you uh, learn it or check out my videos to uh, learn how to use it. We will call this model one. And our latent outcome will be polarization. The items in my data set are called poll P1, poll P2, and poll P3. Uh, as I said, that's the only latent variable. Um, and we're going to have perceived commonality, which in my data set is called SO. And uh, it's going to be uh, regressed on the dummy variable for uh, good C, stands for good contact or good intergroup contact. And then that latent polarization variable will be regressed on the inclusion of the other in the self scale, which measures perceived commonality. And we'll go fit one is uh, mod one, the data set I named after myself, it's called Ben, and we'll use the standardized latent variable method for identification. And then for summary, oops, I just, I'm gonna name this fit one so I don't have typos. Call that fit one, um, model fit equals true, though we're not really gonna look at it, good practice. Standardized solution we do want, and we want our square values. Though we don't really need them for any of this. So we fit that model. Levon does all the work for us. Um, and you'll see that uh, we have five degrees of freedom. And this chi square is um, an estimate of the amount of misfit in our model. So on five degrees of freedom, the model misfit is 3.259. Um, now that's important, because, and I guess, yeah, and then we can look at the effects. So uh, the regression estimates are telling us that um, good contact, uh, the people in the good contact condition appeared to be, um, you know, two-thirds of a point higher on inclusion of the other in the self or perceived commonality compared to those in the experimental treatment. And we're getting this guess that that is statistically significant. But this p-value um, is, is, can be somewhat unreliable. Um, and you know, not everybody likes it, and I don't necessarily recommend that you rely exclusively on this p-value for significance testing. Uh, so the chi-square difference test is gonna give us a more uh, formal and reliable test of whether this effect is statistically significant. And same with this, uh, we'll test to see if the effect of perceived commonality on polarization is statistically significant. It appears that for each point somebody goes up on that perceived commonality scale, their affective polarization goes down about a quarter of a point, which seems uh, nice and handy, but we'll wanna make a, a, we'll run a formal test to make sure that effect is statistically significant. So to do that, I'm gonna fit a nested model that enforces the null hypothesis. So I'm gonna copy the first model and paste it, and then relabel everything. So instead of model one, model 1.1, and instead of fit one, fit 1.1, change that throughout. And then the only change I'm gonna do is where I'm estimating the effect of the experimental treatment on the mediator, I'm gonna constrain that estimate to zero. And in Levon, you do that with an asterisk. So this asterisk will say, whatever I put here, I want you to attach to this. So if it's a letter, then this is a label. And I'm saying, I want you to name that path A. But if it's a number, 
then it's a value. So you're saying, I want you to constrain this path to equal zero in this instance. And you could constrain it to one or some other value, but because the null hypothesis is that the experiment had no effect, we're gonna constrain it to zero. So this represents the null hypothesis for this path. So we run that. And you'll see that the effect, rather than being estimated, is now zero, because we fixed it to zero. And because we're estimating one fewer parameter, then the degrees of freedom go up. So we get an extra degree of freedom by constraining the parameter. But you'll also know that the chi-square went up from about 3-something to about 26-something. So there was an increase of about 23 in that chi-square statistic. And that chi-square statistic is quantifying the misfit in the model. So there was an increase in chi-square of about 23 and a change in degrees of freedom of 1. And if you remember your chi-square table, we all memorized the chi-square table, right? Uh, on one degree of freedom, the critical value of chi-square for a p-value of less than 0.05 would be about 3.4 or 3.8. I'm sorry, about 3.8. Um, and so, you know, we could check our chi-square tables and say, oh, this change is uh, statistically significant. Therefore, um, it's unreasonable to assume that the effect of the experiment on this outcome is zero. Uh, it's probably not zero. Now, uh, you might think, well, I don't want to do all these subtractions in my head. You know, I have to scroll up and see, wait, what was the chi-square from the previous model that's unconstrained, 3.259, and I need to subtract that from the chi-square of this one, 26.514. Then I have to look it up in a chi-square table. Oh, that's so much work. Fortunately, uh, the good people who developed the SEM tools package developed a nice little shortcut for that. So if you haven't installed and loaded SEM tools, you can do so now. SEM tools, the T's capitalized, and then load. So install and load SEM tools, and then they developed a function that they named ANOVA. Why did they name it ANOVA? I'm not sure. I'm sure it makes a lot of sense to them, and I'm sure if I were in the room when they did it, I would say, ah, yeah, ANOVA, great name. But my students get confused because they think ANOVA is an analysis of variance and you know, you're comparing uh, the means of groups. And so they say, look, I did a bunch of ANOVAs. And I said, you did a bunch of chi-square difference tests. Uh, maybe it's a semantic difference. Anyway, the name of the command is ANOVA. And then in parentheses, you put fit one because this is the reference model that we fit up here. And then fit 1.1 because this is the nested model that we fit down here. And so what it's gonna do is take the chi-square and the degrees of freedom from the, the reference model and compare it to the nested model and let us know if the change is statistically significant. So we run that syntax and it says, oh yeah, for the first model, you had five degrees of freedom, your chi-square was 3.2591. For your nested model, you had six degrees of freedom with a chi-square of 26.5144. The difference is 23.255 on one degree of freedom, and that is statistically significant. And notice it gives it to the p-value to you in scientific notation here. So E-06 would mean that you move that decimal over one and then five zeros. So the p-value would be um, p is less than point, uh, point zero 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 one four one nine, which is statistically significant by any measure. Now, we can do the same thing to test the effect of perceived commonality on polarization. So we can copy that nested model, paste it down here, change the labels from 1.1 to 1.2, and then move this constraint so that we're now estimating the effect of um, the contact condition on perceived commonality, and then constrain this to zero. So, no, so we're now enforcing the null hypothesis for the effect of perceived commonality on polarization. So we run that, and again we see now this is the path that's constrained to zero, and we're estimating this path again. And we look up here and we see that we again have six degrees of freedom and the misfit statistic, the chi-square statistic, uh, is 
8.17, which looks like it's going to be a bigger difference from 3 than um, the 3.8 needed for the critical value of chi-square. But let's run it through the uh, nice ANOVA tool just to make sure. So fit1 is still our reference model with no constraints. And then fit1.2 is the new model. And you see it does show fit1, those statistics are the same as before. Fit 1.2 on six degrees of freedom. It's a hundred and you know you see that chi square 107.817. The chi square difference is 104.56, which is indeed a larger number than the 3.8 we need for the critical value of chi square on one degree of freedom. You see this uh, p value. Yes, that is considerably below the 0 0.05 threshold used by convention. So again, we can conclude that the null hypothesis is not likely to be true in the population with regard to the effect of perceived commonality on affective political polarization. So uh, I hope that that uh, video was useful for you. Um, I, li I think the chi-square difference test using a series of nested model comparisons is the best way to um, examine any specific path for statistical significance. And so if you have a hypothesis that one variable is going to have an effect on another variable um, and you want to do some uh, model comparisons to compare your theoretical model to some alternative models. I think these nested model comparisons where you enforce the null hypothesis is a good way to do it. Um, and so uh, hopefully you found that uh, useful and thanks for watching to the end of the video.